Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for September 26, 2018. I'm teaching a series entitled Standing on a Word from God, where we have been studying the life of Abraham. And we're going to get to other people, but for right now, we've been studying the life of Abraham, and this is part 21 of the series. So, for 21 messages, we've been looking at the life of Abraham, how we stood on the promise from God, how the, the promise came to pass 25 years later, and now, 17 years after that, He's been walking with God for 42 years and he has this supernatural encounter with God on Mount Moriah. So we've been looking at Genesis chapter two for a little while. Uh, we looked at verses six to eight uh, for a few days. I want to look at verses nine through 12 this morning. The title of today's message is faith and trust. This is standing on the word from God, part 21, faith and trust. So Genesis chapter 22, verses nine through 12. This is what the Bible says. When they came to the place where God told them to go. This is on the top of Mount Moriah. Abraham built an altar. He carefully laid the wood on the altar. Then he tied up his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. <laughs> oh man, this is crazy. Then Abraham reached for his knife and he lifted up his knife to kill his son. And right there at that moment, the angel of the Lord stopped him. And the angel called from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And Abraham answered, yes. And the angel said, don't kill your son or hurt him in any way. Now I can see that you do respect and obey God. I see that you are ready to kill your son, your only son, for me. So it's like, all right, don't do it. We're going to learn later what happens next. But it's like, now that I see that you're really going to do it, that you was willing to do it, that you tied up your son, you laid out the altar, you prepared up the wood, you laid him down and you lifted up your knife. You did all of that in faith because you did that in faith. Now you're not going to have to do it. I'm talking about faith. I'm talking about trust this morning. What does this mean to you today? On this Wednesday morning, I have two things to share with you on today. And as I release this now, I want you to open up your heart to hear what God is saying. While I'm speaking, God, the Holy Spirit will be speaking at the same time. And so you will hear a voice behind my voice. You will hear a word behind my word. I pray that you hear in the spirit. You ready? Two things. Number one. Living by faith is a journey of discovery. The Bible tells us all throughout many places in the Bible, Old and New Testament, that the just shall live by faith. We are the just and we are called and commanded to walk and live by faith. But this living by faith is a journey of discovery. There was a time in my life when I was uh, young in ministry or really young to God that I thought I was kind of taught this and, and, and this was my understanding of faith, that faith was about me like finding a scripture and then decreeing and declaring it or me make coming up with something in my heart and then asking God to give it to me. And, you know, I saw God do something for somebody else. And I'm, oh, I want that, too. I want this car. I want this house. I want this. I want that. And, you know, I claimed it or I decreed it or I declared it or I would take it. And I would say, God, you got to give it to me now. And so I, <laughs> I had a warped understanding of faith. Um, when you understand that God already planned everything from the world before the world began, that God already stored up everything I would ever need to accomplish my divine assignment before I ever took one breath, that God called me from the foundations of the world to be the man that I was called to be. So then faith cannot be, therefore faith cannot be about me coming up with something in my heart and then asking God to give it to me, me coming up with something in my heart and then making a demand on God to do what I birthed in my heart to do. No, faith is not birthed in my heart. Faith is birthed in God's heart because he planned it from the, before the foundations of the world. So faith is birthed in the heart of God, not in the heart of man. Faith is not about me trying to get God to comply with my will. Faith is about God trying to get me. Faith is about dying to self. It's about yielding to God. It's about surrender. Faith is about God trying to get me to comply to his will. And so faith is about discovery. Faith is not about me coming up with something or deciding something and then asking God to give it to me. Faith is about me discovering what God already decided from the foundations of the world so that I walk in that. He's God, not me. He sits on the circle of the earth, not me. He's on the throne, not me. It's about him. It's not about me. So <laughs> faith is about me walking in accordance with God's kingdom plans and purposes, things that he established before the world began. Say amen to that. Glory to God. So when you discover God's will and you start walking in it and when you say, I'm doing what he's telling me to do, he's God. It's not the tail wagging the dog. I'm not telling him what to do. He's telling me what to do. And so I'm, I'm discovering his will and I'm walking in it and I'm doing what God is telling me to do. Then you will find when you start living like that, that God will favor you, that God's favor will go before you. Everything you need will already be provided because everything you need was already stored up. So let me tell you 
uh, how I can connect the, the dots between what I just said and this story. So Abraham is 117 years old. Isaac is 17 years old. And there is no way that a 117 year old man is going to get a 17 year old boy to lay down on, on an altar without his cooperation. There's no way the Bible, the text says that Abraham tied him up and then laid him down on the altar. There's no way that a 117 year old man is going to tie up a 17 year old boy. If the 17 year old boy doesn't want to be tied up when they were going up the mountain, the 17 year old boy said, daddy, I see the wood, daddy, I see the fire. Daddy, I see everything you need. I see the knife, but I don't see the lamb. Where's the lamb? He didn't have a revelation as they were going up. But some way, somehow, when they got to the top of the mountain, while Abraham was lunging out in faith to do what God was telling him to do, in the process, God started to deal with Isaac. And the, the text doesn't say that Abraham explained anything to Isaac. The text just says that I, Abraham tied him up. And so it's obvious that Isaac cooperated with the process. It's obvious that God was dealing with Isaac's heart as well. It's obvious that God was touching Isaac's heart to say, go along with this. You don't need to understand it. I'm, I'm working something here. And so Isaac had to allow himself to be tied up. And Isaac probably had to kind of roll and lay himself down on top of that altar. Abraham, uh, Isaac had to cooperate with the process. The point is, my point is this, when you launch out to do what you believe that God is telling you to do, then you're going to discover that just like you discovered the purpose, just like you discovered the will, you're also going to discover that everything you need along the way is already been provided. It has already been stored up. All the resources you're going to need, they're waiting on you. The people that you're going to need, they're waiting on you. The Bible says that God can turn the heart of a king like he turns a river. God will move on people and they will use their power, their ability, their influence and their money to help you in ways that you cannot help yourself. But you got to get started. You have to launch out. Once Abraham started to do this, then Isaac cooperated with the process. You have to go out and as you go, then everything you need, you'll discover has already been provided. So you may think that you're waiting on God and you're like, God, I need this. I need that. I need these people to say this. I need these people to do that. I need these resources. This is how much money I need. This is what, no, 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 no. You're telling God all the stuff that you need and you're sitting here waiting. I'm not going to get started until I have everything I need. And that's not the life of faith. And that's not what God has called us to do. God is like, everything has already been stored up for you. Everything has already been provided and everything is already waiting on you. You think you're waiting on me, but I'm waiting on you. God, you think you're waiting on God. God is waiting on you to get started. You need to get started. And as as you go, then you'll discover that things are waiting on you. As you go, what you need will already be provided because it was provided before the world began. So you have to get started in faith and then the manifestation will come. Number two, I only have two points on this morning. You must be willing to do what God tells you to do, even when you don't have a full understanding of it. So Abraham, I'm convinced, did not fully understand what was going to happen on the mountaintop. He just didn't. I mean, he was going out there that we don't have any indication from scripture that he had a full understanding of it. Matter of fact, he was ready to kill his boy. He was ready to burn him up. He had the wood. He had what he needed for the fire. And then God didn't require that of him. God didn't require him to burn him up. But Abraham didn't know that. So Abraham was ready to do it. He was just doing whatever he thought God was leading him to do. All Abraham knew was this. He told the servants, you guys wait here. Me and the boy were going up the mountain. And me and the boy were coming back down from the mountain. So Abraham had a revelation of he and the boy walking up and he and the boy coming back. Now, what happened in between? He didn't know what was going to happen on top of the mountain. He didn't know. But what he did know was that he and the boy were going up and he and the boy were coming back. See, as a believer, you have to God will give you a glimpse of something, but he won't tell you everything. And so you have to launch out with what you know, with what God has revealed. You have faith for, for what God has shown you. But you're not going to have all the answers. You have to go out because if you had all the answers, then it wouldn't require faith. So he went out there and you're going to have to go out there. He launched out and you're going to have to go launch out. I'm going to have to launch out. See, faith and trust go hand in hand. Let me say something about trust and I'll close. Faith is what you do when you are sure, when you are certain. So faith is about being sure of what God said. It's about being certain that God will do what he said he would do. That's Hebrews 11 and 1. Faith is about being sure. Faith, faith is about being certain. So when, you, when God tells you something and reveals something to you, you can be sure and you can be certain. But along the way, there are going to be things that you are not sure, that you are not certain of, that you are neither sure nor certain. What do you do on those occasions? Well, you can't have faith because you're not sure and you're not certain. You can't have faith because God didn't really say what was going to happen in this situation. So it's not really faith. 
What do you do there? Well, in those situations, like Abraham did on top of the mountain, you're going to have to trust God. You are going to have to trust God when you can't trace him. You're going to have to trust God when you don't know exactly what he's going to do. There's, there are times where he has revealed it to you so you can stand on a written word or audible word or something that he revealed. Yes, that's faith when you're sure and when you're certain. But what do you do when you're not sure? What do you do when you're not certain? You're going to have to trust God. You have to trust that God has your best interest in heart. You have to trust that God. Listen, I may not know how it's going to turn out, but I trust that is going to turn out good because God loves me and God made plans for me before the world began. So some things I, I clearly heard. So I have faith for those things. Other things I did not clearly hear. So I'm going to trust God along the way. Some things that I got to have faith. I got to have trust. So I have faith for what he clearly said. And I trust God where I don't have that type of clarity. I'm still going to trust God and launch out. And as I go, like Abraham, I have faith, I have trust. And as I go, I believe that God's best is going to be manifested in my life. We're called and commandment, commanded to walk and live by faith. But along the way, there will be times where you don't have that type of surety or, or certainty. On those occasions, you're going to have to trust God. You have to trust God when you don't understand what he's doing. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to repeat after me now in faith from a believing heart. Say this. Say, Father, this is a season of expectation for me. I live in expectation of your full manifestation in my life. I am sure and certain that you will do everything you promise to do in my life before I die. So I live by faith and I execute in accordance with that certainty. Now, along the way, though, there will be times where I am neither sure nor certain. <laughs> On those occasions, I trust you, Father. On those occasions, I yield over to your goodness. I trust that you have my best interest in heart. I will trust you even when I cannot trace you, even when I don't know what you're doing. So I live by faith and trust. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages. Go to todaysword.org and there's a subscribe button there on the website. Please subscribe. Get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. As you head into this day, have faith in what you know. Trust God for the rest. <laughs> you got to trust God even when you don't have a full revelation of it. But what God has revealed, you can have a surety and confidence that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. You need faith and trust. Please share this message with someone that you know before you leave the screen. Walk in the blessing. God loves you, and so do I. God bless you.